Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. This is Ray Tuchiyama for another exciting segment on business in Hawaii. Actually, we're talking about business in Hawaii, business companies led by visionary CEOs who wish to export products, especially to Japan and other Asia Pacific markets. And this is a huge new area for businesses in Hawaii and throughout the world, exporting. And today we have uh, a guest who is really involved in assisting business in Hawaii to export to Japan and other Asian Pacific countries. His name is Lyle Fujikawa from the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism. And we're looking at Japan as a great market for goods from all over the world, but we think, and Lyle thinks, and the department and the Hawaii State thinks that there's a, there's a receptive market for quality products from Hawaii. And Japan is quite unique to Hawaii. There's nearly two million tourists a year from Japan. They spend time and on the beaches, at restaurants, shopping. And there's, back in Japan, about 600 to 700,000 people involved in hula and Hawaiian music, practicing the ukulele and really, really interacting with Olelo Hawaii, Hawaiian language, and anything that really sparks their interest in things about Hawaiian history and culture. Welcome to the show, Lyle. Thank you, Ray. Really appreciate it. I uh, appreciate the invitation to, to speak, and it's always a pleasure to see you. So. Well, uh, let's uh, uh, define what the state of Hawaii does <coughs> yes. to really help uh, Hawaii business export to Japan. Where <coughs> can we start? Um, well, we have a, an annual program. Uh, we're actually leading up to, uh, we're, we're waiting for the decision. It's actually a grant from the SBA. It's called High Step, Hawaii right. State Trade Expansion Program. And it's something that we've been doing for about, oh, I want to say seven, eight years. And we really have systematized things. We, we work with great partners like the SBA. Uh, SBDC. That's a uh, small business administration. Small business administration yeah. who, who gives us the grant, but we have partners who do consulting, uh, the Hawaii Pacific Export uh, Council, right. HPEC. <coughs> SBDC also helps us with counseling. And what we do is we prepare Hawaii companies uh, who are selling well and they think they can get to the next level and actually export product to, to Japan or to other, other markets. So what you're saying is that <clears throat> they've already developed a product for the Hawaii market first, right? right? right. And they've already <clears throat> enjoyed some success Let's and they're say, looking for the future. Right, so let's say they, they're in Waikiki or they have uh, some product in, in Don Quixote perhaps right. and you have all these Japanese tourists buying it and they, they see, oh, oh we right. have something and so what is the next step? Um, they understand that they need to sort of localize their product to make it right. acceptable or, or even readable, the, right. the brand name right. and, and what it's about. In, in the Japanese into language. Japanese language. Yeah. And they say, oh, you know, what, what should we do? So we do get a lot of inquiries like, what, what do I need to do mm. to get my product into right. Japan? And, and that so, also includes the packaging, right? Packaging. And, and, and how you <clears> present them, and quality, quality ingredients. Yes, know. the whole the whole bit. So right. there's, there's a big gap in terms of what uh, the Hawaii companies understand they may have gotten uh, success to a certain level, but then they need to really jump to another level. And so through our program, we work with a lot of other partners to give them that advice. It's concrete, uh, you know, systematized, and to uh, get them literally into the market where they can meet with you know, potential distributors and, and you know, customers as well. So you prepare the way for companies that have uh, had some success, early success, mm -hmm. and, it's, and you're correct, uh, do, the Don Quixote's or the uh, shop, uh, 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 shops or, or uh, sh uh, Waikiki stores where mm -hmm. they may have their product on the shelves, uh, they've already tested it out with Japanese right. because they're Japanese tourists right. that come exactly. to uh, exactly. Hawaii. And mm -hmm. when they 
buy it and then bring it back and they enjoy this word of mouth uh, right. and then more people come right. to uh, really seek out that product right. and and suddenly the uh, people behind that product the CEO, the owner, mm -hmm. and the marketing folks said, wow, there must be a market in Japan. Yes. Or, you know, the, the business owner or people may have traveled to Japan right. and seen this opportunity, well, you know, a product that is similar, or maybe they see there's a gap. They say, oh, our product should be here right. in the gap, and we could fill this. This is an opportunity. So uh, we have all kinds of companies that we help, um, <clears throat> large and small, startups to, you know, established companies, and we've been finding great success through our uh, business to business introductions. Uh, we have this uh, one particular show, to Tokyo International Gift Show. Aha, uh -huh, we're going to lead up to that. We'll lead yeah. up to that. <laughs> and that's a B2B activity. But more, more recently, we've been doing actually B2C. Uh, sort of a pop-up show in in Osaka, and that's been uh, hugely successful. Now, B two B means that uh, you're you're marketing or selling <coughs> or kind of uh, showing your uh, products to uh, other businesses, right? Who Correct. Want maybe become your partners, your distributors, or uh, channels uh, within Japan. Exactly. That's one thing. And B two C means people off the street who may ha look at the products as wow, it's it's great, but somehow if you modify it, it will be even better for the exactly. Japanese consumer. Right. Correct. Yeah. As, as um, you, you said, the B2B is really about the distribution, right? right. And as we, yeah. you and I know very well, since we were working in Japan, distribution is key. You need to have an importer, right. you need to have someone who's going to take that product to another uh, wholesaler yeah. who will go to a specialty retailer. Right. Very complex. And so... And, and we discussed this even before the show. Right. It's even complex for Japanese exactly, companies right. who speak Japanese, right. write Japanese, but are befuddled uh, by <clears throat> the complexity of uh, distribution. And sometimes they say that this is a uh, barrier to business in Japan, it, even within Japan it, itself. It, it really is. And so we, we we have partners on the ground, our friends at U.S. Commercial Service, right, right the, uh, at the embassy, um, export.gov, and what they do, um, they do have specialists understanding each, you know, market, category, geographic. They provide information and relationships, and they will make introductions. And so using their support, we will put on a show like the Tokyo National Gift Show and match up businesses with potential importers, potential distributors, and all that. Well, why don't we go and show what a show looks like? Sure. Can we have yeah. the first slide up? Uh, okay. All right. What, what, what is <coughs> so the showing these are the, where, where is this show? This is in Umeda, uh, right. Osaka. This right. is actually the Hankyu uh, Hawaii Fair. And, and I when just, was this? When was I just uh, yeah. went there in July, right. uh, the beginning, first work week in July. This is a B2C show, right. and you actually have uh, Hawaii companies are able to bring their product wow. and sell directly to, to Japanese consumers. And what is this um, product we're seeing? This right is now? Chocolea. Right, uh, right. Erin oh, yeah. is uh, an up and coming star. Right. She's got a great product. Right. Her mission is to uh, bring about world peace one piece of chocolate at a time. Well, and, and again, we were talking about before the show, uh, her uh, Chocolea chocolates really reflect a um, obsessional quality. Yes. And also an authentic Hawaii story. Yes. It's from a whitewashed cottage in Manoa. Yes. And and when you take a bite of that chocolate, you're experiencing the breezes from Manoa Valley, and you're part of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's it's uh, definitely aspirational. You know, I always show this pyramid at the very top. It's e emotional benefit, um, and it's something that uh, you know all consumers will aspire to, but especially Japanese. And, they they want to be yeah, right. in Hawaii. They want to be. Right like you and I, locals, you know, and they want to understand what it's like to. And now, uh, when, when I see that, what was uh, that company trying to do? Uh, showcase a product to Japanese consumers <coughs> or distributors yes. or, uh, or um, trying to attract more people to buy things in Hawaii? <coughs> so specifically, um, she's selling to consumers in Osaka to show that her product has uh, viability, right. right? She would sell continued, um, I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but in uh, Valentine's Day, February, is huge oh, yeah. for chocolate right. in Japan. Right. And so what she was trying to do was to oh, show the, uh, the uh, viability of her right. product and that it would be popular and so for Hankyu right. to uh, actually bring her product in for Valentine's right. Day. Right. <clears throat> 
<coughs> Valentine's Day is millions of dollars sure. in, in you know revenue. I think it's billions. <laughs> billions. It could be. It really could be because as, yeah. as you and I remember, there's uh, a white uh, white day. Also. White day afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the, the, the a lot of uh, uh, that's that's a another whole that subgenre that drives is, is, is not just people you like. It's yeah. like people you're obligated right. to. Your your and so forth. All so the, yeah. there's this economic activity wow. that if she can just get a right. piece of that, wow, tremendous. She got it right. just in Kansai region. That's like oh, that'd 50, be, 100 that'd million huge. dollars. Yeah. That's huge, but right. uh, fantastic. So she was showcasing this product to uh, gain visibility. To gain visibility, brand, uh, yeah. to, to, to gain feedback as well. So as well, what flavors were working? Yeah. How did you think of my, my wow. packaging? Um, and talking to you know, the consumers as much as possible. So. Well, okay, next, next slide. Yeah. This is uh, also part of the Hawaii Fair. So all the all the photos are from the most recent, right. uh, very very new, uh, very successful fair. Uh, it happens every year in early July uh, for seven days. Uh, we have uh, 250,000 consumers of all you know demographics wow. and and what have you uh, come through. But the sponsor, Hankyu. Umeda Department Store right. is the arbiter of style in right. Osaka. It's so upscale, very it's luxury upscale. scale. Yeah, it's, right. it's like your, your Nordstrom, Neiman right. Marcus. Right. Uh, the people who come in are, are, you know, they have money. Right. They're looking for authentic products, right? right? Quality right. and the, the kind of thing that is really, again, the emotional ties, you know, to whatever Hawaii experience that they have. And I see it's right. dresses here. I know I can there's that. apparel, yeah. there's, there's gift, yeah. you know, items. Right. Uh, cosmetics, skincare. It's it's like a, um, I mean, it's a Hawaii fair, so it's it has like a mini everything. Ball, it's a mini about? ball yeah. for seven days. Okay, and it's, ne it's amazing. Next that slide, they, please. That they do. Um, Nina Tai, she's been uh, very successful. Uh, she has two stores in Waikiki. Um, Apparel that oh, is for young young right. women, uh, very successful in her business as well because what she's done is understand what. Um, a Japanese consumer wants, right. making sure that she continues that, but she pushes the edge and wow. you know in terms of design and, and all that. And what is her market niche? Um, it, I would say it's, it's young Japanese women yeah. um, and twenties, twenties, thirties, like uh, um, you know fashionable. Yes, Definitely you know, fashionable, uh, but they have disposable income. Okay, and so right. they they will spend money. Right. Uh, her price point isn't super high, but definitely right. the quality is oh, there. Terrific. But she had brought up the idea. So she been, she's been in Hankyu for at least three years. Right. From the very beginning, she says, we need to do a fashion show. Wow. And so she brought up that idea, and it took two years to, oh, <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah. everything, takes, yeah. everything good takes time, right, <laughs> in Japan. So she brought up the idea, uh, successful, you know, filling up yeah. the time, getting people to buy stuff. And, you know, again, yeah. promotion, you know, showing, you know, her product and, and other people's, you know, apparel. Um, and, but she's a, a great partner because what she does is shares her information. Uh, each time she always learns something new. And so she's the kind of entrepreneur that we want to you know, help. I mean, she's not waiting for, tell me what to do. She's doing it, and then she says, I'm, I'm, cr I'm trying to do this. Help me with this. And so we keep you know, adding together, and so it becomes Ter very synergistic. Terrific, and we're going to come yeah. back uh, to more exciting stuff Thanks. for the Hawaii entrepreneur in a few moments. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Are you tired of sleepwalking through life? Are you dreaming of a healthier, wealthier, happier you? You're not alone, and that's why thousands of people tune in each week to watch R.B. Kelly on Out of the Comfort Zone, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Make a change, get the help you need, and stop sucking at life. Hey, Arby, we're about to go live. Oh. Hello, it's 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, and I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. Welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. Welcome back. 
through a scintillating discussion in, at the Hankyu department store in Umeda, Osaka, where the top Hawaii companies and entrepreneurs want to really find success in the Japan market through the assistance of the Hawaii State Agency in Economic Business uh, Development. So we have Laya Fujikawa, and uh, could we have the next uh, slide up, please? And here we go. It's a lot of pink there. It's and, it's and Royal what? Hawaiian Hotel. Oh. There was you know their anniversary, and so they had a uh, a booth of their anniversary items, wow. merchandise, and they allowed um, Hankyu to to borrow the design wow. elements. So that's the center of uh, this huge amphitheater floor uh, that they they put all the the stores around. Smack dab in the middle is Banan, and this doesn't show. This doesn't do justice, but. You see those stanchions there. Yeah, they yeah, didn't yeah. have them. In true Japanese style, they waited for the line to really develop. Yeah. And then they said, OK, we got to put control right, on here. Right. And the line didn't go it, it, you know, hundreds of people. And what were they lining up for? Banan. Oh, it's banana. A, banana is this, uh, a, a frozen dessert, right, right. Uh, again, entrepreneurs, a yeah. uh, bunch of kids who decided they're going to make uh, a business. Yeah, yeah. I, I know the one at the university. Right. UH, yeah. yeah. And I, I heard that, well, this is the first time that right. they actually uh, uh, sold in uh, Japan. Right. Uh, so that had a huge uh, cachet and a huge effect on, on and the sales. And what was the reaction? Oh, it was tremendous. Everybody yeah. was, was lining wow. up and they were paying, I think it was like, you know, $10 at least, wow. you know, so wow. they were making money. Uh, everybody was happy. The, um, I heard they had a licensing deal that oh, great, started, great. you know, yeah. so uh, very happy to be helping companies get to the next level. You know, our job is to, we really take a lot of startups and, and you know, guide them with other people's help, the other partners, to get to be, a, a, you know, a viable business, continue, help them with branding, and then, you know, we're in the kind of more mature part with the exports. But, you know, so. you're, you're um, correct with the branding and so forth, but there's a lot of um, preparation that goes into right. it. it. You just can't hop on a plane tomorrow and go yes. to Osaka and expect to know how to say, exchange cards, Japanese meishi, right. business cards, or right. have the right uh, packaging, or ha have uh, Japanese and English on your brochures, or uh, to have pricing or uh, your channels of distribution all figured out uh, right. before you go. Mm -hmm. Now, th these are very complex uh, areas just uh, that, that really deserves a show by themselves, yes. uh, all these topics, mm -hmm. and websites uh, also. Right. Uh, but uh, what would you recommend uh, people to do, uh, you know, before investing in uh, a booth, would you recommend people just going to one of these shows? Or, or, Most definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, Erin uh, earlier, Chocolea, she had um, realized that she wasn't at the stage to actually have a booth yeah. when she did the Tokyo International Gift Show, and so that was a couple years ago. And she said, I'm just going to go, I'm going to see how things are, I'm going to check out the market. Right. And so that's the very first thing you can do. Um, it's very inexpensive now to travel to Japan, right. and you have uh, you can just go for a few days, check out the market. But in terms of strategy, right. definitely want to talk to us at DBET yeah. because we have our high step program, which has uh, training seminars. We have the consulting. You know, we're we're helping you by subsidizing and and putting together this Hawaii pavilion. Uh, so you know, they should really contact us, you know, right away. Get into uh, our email uh, news newsletters. Uh, we have a lot of things that are online, um, and you can start learning from, from there. Um, we have other people who um, have been successful, but they've had to really figure things out. By That's the right. And, and some so, areas like yeah. uh, food items, you know, they have to be very careful yes, because, exactly. uh, as you know, uh, Japan uh, restricts beef imports uh, from the U.S. to right. Japan, even still. Or that, any, uh, yeah. yeah that, very so beef jerky is kind of off the table. Right. But there may be other food products that are, can be sold in Japan, but they have to really talk to the, uh, the right people, including the Department of Health uh, state uh, people here, yes. to get really uh, insights and guidelines on how, how, what is the best types of products, food products, to sell in Japan? Exactly. And, and as you know, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals and food are two areas where Japan is very strict on, right. uh, on ingredients <clears throat> and so forth. So I, I'm glad you touched on that because we do have, in, in terms of uh, the Hawaii brand, we have uh, a lot of opportunity for 
we have great food products right. that, that can be exported, but you just have to do it in the right way. Uh, meaning that you need to have the right agent who will help right. you you know, localize your ingredients yep. list and, and make sure that you're not on some, you know, list that's going to get rejected. Yeah, you're passing customers. That's passing a, customs. That's, that's a big barrier getting, right, right there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Getting through customs, yeah. you know, making sure that your your, your products are packaged the right size. Right. You know, the quantity is not right. a huge thing. Right. You know, very small. It's not like everybody yeah. goes to Costco's every day. Exactly, they, they, right. They, they buy things Where, every day to put in a small which, refrigerator. Which yeah. retailer are you going to be at? Are you, yeah. Is it going to be, you know, uh, a gift item? What's the pricing? You know, there's right. all these basic things that you could start with your, your basic business plan and as an extension of that, say you're going to create your export plan right. and, and refine it towards that. But again, because Japan is such a different market, it's almost like a whole new business plan right. because are you going to you know create it, manufacture it in Hawaii and then ship it or at some point will I manufacture in well, I thought those, these are great questions because yeah. uh, some uh, entrepreneurs may say, well, I sold in Arizona. I may sell the same uh, shape or packaging or same ingredients that is a fallacy. in Japan. Yes. And yeah. that's, that's the kiss of death right yes. there. Yes. So, so, so uh, that would be, be very careful and get the best advice. But again, yes. uh, market entry, oh, can we go to another slide before we go into anything else? Here's another one. This this is a tremendous opportunity. This is actually Michelle uh, Zane. Um, Sig Zane is her brother. Oh, wow. uh, Michelle has a company called Hanaho, which yeah. is in Hilo, right. uh, creating Lao Hala products. And yeah. I didn't realize this, but she says her uh, a, a pouch or a wallet yeah. uh, can last for 50 years. Five and, zero. It can define a Lao Hala pouch. Lao Hala, uh, the tree, yeah. the mangrove tree, oh, right? So. Right. They, they have specific, you know, uh, types of trees, right. species that they harvest the leaves, right. they store it for some time. Um, it becomes uh, really a, a treasure right. because things are handmade. They're, right. they're very high quality, so it's perfect for the Japanese. Again, authentic uh, Hawaiian authentic ex experience. Authentic, based, based yeah. on culture. Right. Um, it's, you know, definitely related to hula. Right. You know, it's, it's all related to all those things. Very aspirational and emotional. You would invest in something like this oh, because yeah. it's going to last oh, yeah. for a long time. And they would so. pay a, a lot of money for one of Most those. Definitely. It becomes almost like an heirloom yes. or something. Could definitely you could, become, you could yeah. really show your uh, friends that this right. is, uh, links you again to Hawaii and, in, a, and, in a cultural uh, a, sense. A big part of this was also, too, that they, they had this demonstration. So mm. we had more space oh. this year. Because right. uh, DBA is investing in, <clears throat> in this partnership with, with uh, Hankyu, we have more space for more companies, and we had a table, as you saw, right. people doing demonstrations. Right. And so when you are doing something hands-on, there's going to be an even closer right. affinity to, towards a brand. So uh, that was a great experience, and we, we hope to keep replicating and, and making it. Well, I think the hands-on experience yes. for uh, local people to go, and they'll go back and tell their friends. And oh, yes, this. definitely. Fantastic. Next slide, please. Definitely. Uh, just to show, you know, Hankyu is actually uh, part of a huge group of department stores. They acquired Hanshin department stores. They own a railway company. That's and right. so you yeah. have all these. This is in the station. It's, oh. it's a, a digital sign. Is this an Osaka station? Uh, Osaka, or Umeda? Uh, Umeda, station. Umeda station. So it's right. leading towards the tracks. Right. But that's behind. The wow. de department store is behind. Um, and it, it shows, right? Yeah. This is Hawaii. Right. This is what you aspire to be like or in or around. Yeah. And come to the Hawaii Fair and you, you can be a part of it. So they have huge uh, you know, presence on the web. They have right. a video. Uh, all the trains will have these, these right. signs in there. And so they bring the people. And I think Hankyu yes. would not do it for just about anybody. <laughs> I think there's a very good uh, you know, emotional, cultural, historical historical tie with Hawaii. Definitely. Yeah. Japan yeah. has, as, as you know, the, the uh, cultural ties, the, the values, right. the, the history. Um, backing up a little bit, though, Hankyu definitely is an expert at, at what they do. Right. So we're very fortunate to partner with them and to, um, we as, as a state are, are basically validating, saying, yes, we're bringing authentic products. Right. The, you know, the cultural part is, you know, uh, sort of certifying, if you will. And so uh, we, we fit very well as a partner because we definitely want to promote made in Hawaii. Right. 
yeah, meat and whey right. products right. As, as best as we can. And so we that's that's what we're doing to, to push towards Because Japan. in the end, um, by partnering with this partner, uh, people in Japan then have uh, the seal of approval quality that they know it's been vetted yes. and they know it's a it's an authentic product and it's coming from a state of Hawaii where uh, they really uh, right. like and love. Mm -hmm. And also in the end, though, you're um, uh, creating a pathway for local Hawaiian entrepreneurs creating jobs yes. locally so that it will be, uh, again, export driven uh, <coughs> small business. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think it's, it's easier to start a business now uh, in Hawaii than when I left you know, for Japan you know, 20 years ago. Uh, but to continue that, to make, keep it sustained, is, is hard. So uh, what we're trying to do is to find uh, these other opportunities for companies to sell. And uh, why we do the big B2C is that validation. Like, right. like you said, building the brand and giving them a lot of feedback, which they normally would not be able to do. Well, again, situation. Japan is a huge market. It's the third largest economy in the world, uh, near, over $11.5 trillion. Uh, and uh, like we said, it has a uh, population uh, that loves Hawaii, uh, 600 to 700,000 people who practice the hula and, and, uh, and do music. And, but we're unfortunately at the end yes. of our show, <laughs> and we could go on forever on, on uh, different topics on quality and business development and distribution, which uh, we think are very important to, yes. to people who are coming to Japan and, and finding success. And I want to point out that my uh, column on, on export in Japan will be mm -hmm. featured in the sep September issue of Hawaii Business. It's a plug shamelessly by myself, and, uh, and working with uh, Hawaii companies and other companies uh, for, uh, for market entry. I want to thank all our viewers, and especially Lyle Fujikawa, for another great segment for Hawaii uh, Business in Hawaii. Thank you very much.